In this demo, we're going to look at the parallel shape. And as a developer, one would think in general that parallel would mean concurrent or uh, multi-threaded, but that's not guaranteed. Apparently, BizTalk can, at his own whim and will, make it multi-threaded, but it may not necessarily be multi-threaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a debug here. We're just going to put a bunch of expression shapes. What I've, what I've actually done here is created a separate orchestration just to prove this point called Parallel Demo. And I just receive a little dummy starter message to kick off the orchestration. So that needs to be my activating receive here. And then I'm going to have a parallel shape. And just like with the listen shape, you can actually add multiple branches here by clicking New Parallel Branch. And then you can get multiple branches together. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to make a reference to my little function debug library that we used before. And then we're going to call our trace routine. So in this shape here, we're going to call biztalk.training.com dot common function library and then uh, write string to file. And then we're going to pass up the file name, which I created a variable called vtrace file name. We're going to say boolean append is true. And then we're going to put the name of the text here that we actually want to print. So let me actually split this up a little bit. And this will be, uh, let's call it uh, shape one. And we're going to rename this to basically shape one. And these are just expression shapes. So what I'm going to do is off the video, I'm going to copy this shape. I'll just do one of them here as an example. I'm going to paste it here. And I'm basically just going to call it shape two. And then I'm going to change the trace inside of it to say trace two. And when I come back, you'll see what I've done here. OK, so I'm back. And what I basically did was I put four shapes in each of our three parallel branches. And so each shape basically says, hi, I'm shape number six, and then does a carriage return, or new line return. And so if this is really parallel, you would think that these numbers would kind of be interspersed. And so we're actually going to deploy this and run it. and. Uh, I'll just set that up off the video. So to get this orchestration to start, what I did, by the way, was I created a little tiny schema here called Start Parallel Demo. And I just generated a small test file. And that's enough. Basically, when I drop that message, it will be this activating receive right here. And then that will cause this orchestration to run. And then each of these traces will print. And then I have a final trace at the end. So I set up a receive location here called, I have a new application called Parallel Demo. And I set up a receive port and a receive location, which we need to start, enable. OK, then we're going to go drop the file to start that orchestration. So I created here a file drop. And I'm going to drop the start parallel traced instance file here. Notice it has not picked up yet. And that makes me wonder if my of course if my receive location is started, then is my host instance started? And my my machine rebooted last night, so I need to start that. And there the file goes. We'll check hat first just to make sure it orchestration really started. And I got our famous error that there were no subscribers. And that, again, I made a mistake. I didn't go to orchestrations, and I didn't bind or start my orchestration. So we need to go to Properties, Bindings. And I need to give it the host. And I need to tie the internal port to the new physical port that I just created called Receive Parallel Starter Message. And now I'll start the orchestration. And now when I drop the message again, I should have a subscriber for it. Okay, now I see it started. I drop the file again. Back to hat. And we can see the file was received at 1231 and the orchestration completed. So the trace for the orchestration is supposed to go here. And then we open that. And you can see what happened. You see shape 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
Now, if that were really parallel, you would think that occasionally, maybe, one of these messages would appear before one of these messages, right? So you can tell that this is, it's more of a logical business parallel than it is a multi-threading parallel. Now, just to kind of prove our point a little bit further, let's stick a little delay shape right here. So after shape two, we want to delay maybe a second. So we have uh, here these different constructors again. We have hours, minutes, seconds. So zero hours, zero minutes, and let's do 10 seconds. Okay, so we put our delay here, delay 10 secs. Okay, now I want to test the orchestration again, so I will redeploy it. Again, while it's redeploying, I'm going to restart my host instance to pick up the new copy. Deploy has succeeded. And I use the same trace name every time here, so I'm going to delete that trace. And we're going to go back up to the file drop. We'll drop our test file. Confirm that it actually ran. And the orchestration started, but not, did not complete yet. That's because we have the 10 second delay, right? So we wait 10 seconds, we run it again. Still not completed. We run it again, and now it's completed. So you can tell there was a little bit of a delay there. Now we go to the trace. And what do you see now? You do see shape 1, 2. And then since there was a delay of 10 seconds, now you do see a little bit of kind of a parallel going on. So now shapes 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ran. And then after the delay, it kind of came back and ran shape 3 and 4, and then we closed the orchestration. So what this shows us is, let's go back to the source code, that if you have a delay here, we saw that it actually does pause this branch and allows other branches to run. So in the real world, instead of a delay here, what you'd probably see is something like this. You would see a transmit or a send message followed by a receive. Okay, so the receive, in effect, takes the place of the 10 second delay because you might call a web service and that web service then might take 30 seconds to answer. So while this talk is waiting on this receive, the concept is you can go run these other branches. And so it may also be then that you have a, uh, let me just show you one thing you can do here too. You could put these in a group. And let's say this was, uh, you know, call web service one. And then maybe in the second branch here, you'll have call web service two. And in the third branch somewhere, you'll have call web service three. And so now the idea is you can get more throughput by calling all three web services kind of at the same time. So after this sin goes, this is going to kind of pause while waiting on an answer. And then there's a good chance this shape will start running, and then it will call the second web service. And then, while that's waiting, the third branch could actually start and then call the third web service. And then the receives will come back in whatever order that potentially those web services finish. So if this was a 10 second web service and this was a 1 second web service, this receive could come back and maybe this, sh this branch with shape 12 would finish first. And anyway, all three branches would eventually finish. But the point is you don't necessarily get multiple threads when you do a parallel shape. If you really want multi-processing or parallel threads, what you could actually do here is use the start orchestration shape. Uh, in a prior video we talked about call orchestration and we briefly mentioned start orchestration. So you can actually start a different orchestration here and then the things would all, all three orchestrations would be running in parallel. And then you can actually, this, this start orchestr the orchestration that you started can actually send a message back to this orchestration. So that's kind of an alternative way of doing parallel is that 
let me just show you here, you would actually have like a receive and you'd have to do correlation to do this. So you would start an orchestration and you can actually pass what's called a direct binding port and we'll probably do that in a future video and that orchestration runs and when it's done it sends a message back here and then this receive then is basically kind of like says I got the answer back from the orchestration I started and then you continue your flow on down. So that concludes this video and demonstration on the parallel shape.